this storm has a history of producing damage and of hurting people. At this point, it's time to head home. If you live in E-Town, Munfordville, Litchfield, Columbia, areas that maybe haven't seen quite as much moisture yet, the winter storm is now starting for you. Mobile homes that were damaged, a home with some roof damage as well. That's the kind of power these storms are packing. If it was 20 minutes of freezing rain, we can handle that. If it's three hours of freezing rain or a day of freezing rain, that's the problem here. Across the area, temperatures for the most part in the upper 60s. You don't see a single 70 showing up on this map. Rick, I want to talk about this donut hole that we're seeing right here. So this is a typical signature that we would look for when a storm is wrapping in on itself. It can produce these areas of higher reflectivity, these brighter colors, and leave kind of an empty spot in the middle. Looks like a donut hole. That tells us that that storm is rotating. Well, Grace, this parking lot really is a good indicator of what untreated roads around E-Town look like. So we're going to kneel down here. I want to show you this stuff that you see here on top that looks like snow, this is sleet. So you can see how I brush that away and underneath it is pure ice. That's what you see shining through here. So we have less than half an inch of sleet on top and then about two tenths of an inch of ice underneath on this parking lot. Again, this is a good representation of untreated surfaces. So as we go through the morning, this is my concern that those untreated roads, those back roads or neighborhood road, they're completely iced over. We've also had reports from the National Weather Service within about the last hour that in rural spots around E-Town. Tree limbs are starting to come down. The wind is strong. You can see that here. Yeah, Mark, you're exactly right. I mean, even these main roads are getting a little bit slushy, but those side roads are not getting the same attention. They just can't. We don't have enough resources for every road to get plowed and salted the same. I want to point out to you the kind of snow we're seeing right now, and it might be hard to pick up on the camera here. When we first got out here, the snowflakes were big, heavy, wet, great snowman making snow. Now, as the temperature drops, that snow is turning much more icy. They're smaller flakes. They're made more of ice than liquid water. And so as that lays down on top of the road, it's going to create more icy, slick conditions than necessarily wet and slushy ones. So what happened here? We had jet stream winds in the upper levels, 140 miles an hour and strengthening. In the low levels, moving at 95 miles an hour. Plus here at the surface, warm and humid air in the warm sector of this system. As the cold front pushed all of that warm air through, it created just enough spin to produce some of those really violent tornadoes. Very specific sort of atmosphere you have to have to get freezing rain, and this is all going to develop overnight. In the top layer of the atmosphere, think of this as way up in the sky all the way down to the ground, we form these snowflakes. They fall out of the cloud into a layer of warm air, so they melt completely into rain like you see here in the middle levels of the atmosphere. Then as that rain falls down here toward us at the ground, temperatures will be in the 20s. First thing tomorrow morning, pretty much for everybody. So this rain freezes on contact with your car, your back deck, the overpass you have to travel over to get to church in the morning, that sort of thing. So while not everyone will see freezing rain by morning, I do expect we'll see some impacts across the area. Well, my main concern with these storms overnight is the timing. The fact that they're moving through overnight when most of you are planning to be asleep. Please make sure right now that you have a way to receive warnings that would wake you up. I do think we'll get warnings tonight. Now let's talk about what we're seeing on the radar. This is a loop over the last three hours. You can watch a batch of light showers, not thunderstorms, but light showers move through our communities and some heavier rain in southern Indiana. As we zoom into that batch of rain, it is now moving out of our WDRB communities towards Cincinnati. Not our concern anymore. Now you get a little bit of a break, a couple of hours off before we'll turn our attention back to the radar later this evening. That's when we'll see some of those stronger thunderstorms is within the next several hours. In fact, I'm going to open that window for storms between about 9 and 10 this evening. So here's your planner. We stay mild with a lot of moisture in the atmosphere tonight, temperatures in the 60s. But overnight, that storm potential builds. And I think we'll see some of the strongest storms after midnight, which is not the normal time frame. So again, please make sure you have at least two ways to receive weather alerts and at least one of those needs to be able to wake you up while you're asleep. Our risk of severe weather is that level three out of five because I am expecting damaging wind gusts and the potential for isolated tornadoes. The tornado threat is a little bit higher on this than it's been in recent severe weather events, which is why I want to make sure you're aware of that. Overnight, you're going to see some of those stronger storms move into our communities. So when I see you again for your extended forecast in about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll go through the timing of that strongest storm potential. If you were with us when I was outside just a few minutes ago, I mentioned we are seeing some patchy 
uh, freezing drizzle, some flurries across the area. That's what you're looking at here. I've switched us over to correlation coefficient. It helps us see those very fine particles in the atmosphere. So that's what you're seeing here, that kind of debris surrounding the Louisville radar site. Now, when we flip it over to what you're used to seeing, this reflectivity view, you don't see those same flurries and that freezing drizzle. All of that means overnight, well, really for the next couple of hours, if you have to be out, the roads might become slick in very patchy places. It's not everywhere, just where we're seeing that freezing drizzle. Looking in the big picture, snow starting to move in from the west. Now that's not headed our direction. That's headed up toward the lakes, toward Michigan. What's around Nashville now? That is on its way toward us, and you can see both snow and a sleet freezing rain mixture that are already causing some travel concerns outside Nashville. So it would be no surprise that we have this winter storm warning. It is now in effect until 1 p.m. on Tuesday. So that's all day tomorrow and all morning on Tuesday for accumulating snow and slick conditions. So I want to talk to you about timing and impacts here for the next couple of minutes. Overnight, you'll see the snow starts to get a little bit more organized. It gets heavier overnight. Two things I'll point out to you here where you're seeing the snow. I also think we're going to see a lot of sleet mixing in with that overnight snow. OK, that's its own you know, pile of stuff that we have to handle. When we add sleet into that mixture, that makes it more icy. The roads will get more slick as that starts to accumulate. The light pink that you're seeing here, I think that's going to be some freezing rain that does accumulate some ice in our far southern communities who saw ice last week. So you see that continues for the morning drive as we get we have further into the morning, this is now 10 a.m. The moisture thins out a little bit, so that's going to be your break between these two different rounds. By morning, we have seen snow and sleet accumulate overnight widespread kind of a ballpark here about one to three inches of accumulating snow and sleet from this first round that will lead to slick and snowy roads for your Monday morning drive Monday morning. So now let's keep going into the afternoon. This is 10 a.m. where we stopped earlier. You're on a little bit of a break going into the early afternoon. That chance for sleet spreads farther north again, mixing in with that heavier snow. Here it is 4 p.m. The darker shades of purple tell us we're going to be seeing heavier snow through Indiana and communities right along the river during the Monday evening commute. During the commute, we see that heavier snow and that continues overnight. So what you need to know for your evening drive, that heavier snow is starting to stack up. You will be driving in it if you're out. Please don't be out. It's not safe. The visibility will be a problem. The roads will be slick as that snow starts to stack up. I'm going to call it dangerous driving hazardous at the very least. Overnight, that snow starts to thin out a little bit. You see that heavier snow moving away by about midnight. But I'm still not done with the snow impacts by Tuesday. You see a few flurries first thing in the morning. So your Tuesday impacts would be that fresh, heavy snow. It's still here for the Tuesday morning commute. Through the afternoon, the plow trucks, the salt trucks, they have a good chance to work, but temperatures are dropping into the single digits by Wednesday morning. So any moisture, any snow that is still out there Tuesday night will freeze and will be a problem by Wednesday morning. And you can see there's late snow moving into the forecast Wednesday. We have a whole nother system moving in later this week. So when I see you again in about 10 or 15 minutes, we'll go through the snow totals map and we'll talk a little bit more about that system moving in later this week. All right, let's dive into your forecast. There is still rain falling in our area. This is a live look at radar. I've got it zoomed into southern Indiana. This is I-65. You've got 71 kind of cutting the diagonal through this image and 75 on the right hand side. So let me put this in motion for you and you will see the rain moving through the same spots over the last hour. This radar loops over one hour and the rain is falling in the same spots. Now, this is not heavy rain, so I'm not concerned about flash flooding. Normally when I tell you rain falling in the same spots, it's a problem. Not tonight. The rain is fairly light. So as we go through the next couple of hours, we will start to see this rain fading away. But it has more implications than just who got rain today. This map shows you high temperatures from this afternoon. The folks who saw rain had cooler air as well. Bedford only topped out at 49. New Albany topped out at 55 and Louisville was in the upper 50s. The spots that did not see rain, but the wind was a little bit stronger. You guys had temperatures topping out in the high 60s. It was 68 in E-Town, Litchfield, Munfordville and Campbellsville today. So that warmer air set up in southern Kentucky. That's where the wind was stronger. Now the wind is backing down. We only have gusts anywhere from about 5 to 10 miles an hour this evening. So the wind has calmed down. The low pressure center that's bringing us all of this weather starting to move a little bit farther away. So this evening the rain is fading. I'm dropping your chance for rain only 20% because from this point on the rain will only thin out. It shouldn't get any heavier this evening. Your low temperature drops into the 40s again. So if you were cold last night, 
chilly again tomorrow morning. But by the afternoon, tomorrow becomes a much warmer day. Your high jumps towards 70. I do still think tomorrow's going to be a little bit breezy. The wind from the west about 10 to 15 miles per hour, but tomorrow stays dry. In fact, you're going to see a little bit more sunshine in tomorrow's forecast. Here's what's going on in the big picture. We've got this low pressure center with a trailing cold front. It is positioned to our northwest, northwest. As we go through Tuesday and Wednesday, you can see how that cold front passes through our area, but it doesn't bring you tons of rain. Sometimes we call this a dry front, dry in air quotes. I don't think this is going to bring you a huge rain chance. Here's how the next couple of days play out. Tomorrow, slightly warmer, really a nice day. Tuesday, some early showers, scattered rain hangs around by Wednesday, all part of that cold front. So then by Thursday, we're getting colder. That makes a little bit of sense, right? Overnight, a couple of stray showers, but remember, the rain is not getting heavier from this point. It will thin out. So by tomorrow morning, I don't think you're looking at any rain. Maybe a few clouds first thing, but even those will start to break apart by early afternoon. That won't last forever. We add a little bit of moisture back into the picture early Tuesday. Here's that slight chance of some showers Tuesday into Wednesday. Again, nothing crazy there. I'm expecting a few light showers Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the temperature starts to drop. You should really look more at the low temperatures here to see that temperature change. The low Wednesday morning is 51. The low Thursday morning is 38. A lot of you are going to see frost Thursday morning. The high temperatures don't change a whole lot, though. We're looking at highs in the lower 60s, really getting us into the weekend. We're eyeballing your next storm chance over next weekend. We'll be updating that forecast in the coming days. And uh, just a couple of minutes ago, we talked about how Haiti may be hit again by another natural disaster. They had the earthquake, and now we're keeping an eye on the tropics. The tropics, there are three areas of potential development that we're watching. One of those tropical storm Fred that poses a little yep. bit of an impact for us. So that's what you're looking at here. You can start to see if you look at the loop here, Fred getting a little bit more organized right now in the Gulf of Mexico, picking up a little bit of steam, developing to a little bit of a stronger storm. 45 mile per hour winds right now. System number two is tropical depression grace. That's the one we want to watch for impact on Haiti in the next couple of days. Super active forecast here, so let's get into it. This map shows you your high temperatures across the area today and if you stepped outside you know the air felt cooler today i'll tell you it was cooler than i expected upper 70s for your high temperature that's as warm as most of you got you can see though in kentucky a couple of lower 80s showing up on the map a little bit warmer there the clouds really kept your temperatures down today I don't think that's going to be the case tomorrow, though. We will see a little bit more warmth because we will see a few more breaks in the clouds. Just keep in mind, tomorrow won't be necessarily hot. It'll be warm. It's summer, but it's not going to be 90s kind of hot. Still cloudy and cool tomorrow. It's still humid, and so we'll see some pop-up storms in the afternoon as your high temperatures climb into the lower 80s. Now, stop me if you've heard this before. This is our weather maker for the next day or so. It's our quasi stationary front. It came to us as a cold front, then it got stuck. That's the stationary part. Now though, it's going to move back to the north over the next couple of days. So it's technically not stationary more if it's moving, right? Hence quasi stationary. That's where we're at. So this is tomorrow morning. You can see it producing a couple of showers over our area, but that activity really ramps up tomorrow afternoon. We've got a little bit of heat and some humidity in the atmosphere to work with. You'll notice the rain is confined to our southern and eastern communities tomorrow for the most part. I'm not ruling out showers in Indiana, but the heavier rain and the stronger storms still look most likely in southern and southeastern Kentucky. Until that cold front pushes farther away, we're going to hold on to that chance for afternoon showers and storms. This is the leftovers of Fred. Notice we're at Tuesday afternoon. I don't think that's necessarily going to make a direct impact here, but it's something we need to watch for because it adds a little bit more moisture to our atmosphere over the next few days. A few pop up storms tomorrow. By Tuesday, scattered storms are in the forecast. And I do have some isolated rain still Wednesday, though that is your driest, in air quotes, driest day of this forecast. That's also where your temperatures start to jump. So we stay with highs in the lower 80s, fairly comfortable for the next couple of days. By Wednesday, we start to warm up again. You'll see a little bit more sunshine. I want to talk about what that warm up means for your storm potential toward the end of the week when I see you again right around 1035.